Hey guys, you're watching Simon and Ali. My name is AJ, and we are back on another episode of Redstone from Scratch. The series where we're going through the very basics of Redstone and working our way up towards some really cool stuff that we're getting into now. Before we start, though, I want to do a sort of mini shout out, really, to a brand new Minecraft animation YouTube channel, which I've been privileged enough to be involved with at such early stages of their YouTube career life whatever they've got the quality and the determination to become one of the best animators here on youtube they're brand new to it and they've already got uh two animations out which both i'm really impressed with luckily the second animation i have actually been involved with i've done some uh voice acting in it and it stars me in it so i've got a very short clip here a very short clip to show you guys But that's all I'm going to show you. Okay? If you want to go and see the rest of this awesome animation, I'll leave a link in the description below. Just click on that. That'll take you to the video. If you want to show your support, you can go and hit your, the like button on that video. You can also go and subscribe to them if you want as well. If you want to keep up to date with all their animations that they've got in the pipeline. They've got so many ideas. It's crazy. They've got so much imagination and creativity at the minute that... They're going to really, really do well. And I'm going to be involved as much as I possibly can. I really want to do more animations with them. They're interested in doing uh, more animations with me in it. And uh, I really can't wait for it. So if you want to see me in an animated 3D way, then go and click on the description link uh, below and go and check it out. Okay, they'd really appreciate it if you go and support them as well, uh, like like you do on my videos. Do what you'll do on my videos, but on their videos. So go and like their videos as well as mine. Anyway, let's crack into today's episode. So today's episode is clocks. Now, clocks are used in a huge amount of different redstone builds, and there's so many different ways of building them. There's, there's hundreds, in fact. This is just a few of them. But on this redstone from scratch series, I like to do multiple different ways to do certain things. So depending on what you're building and what scale you're building it to, you might fancy doing different clocks. You might want to do this clock for one, but you might want to do that clock for another. So what is a clock? A clock, this is probably the easiest one to explain how what a clock does. If we get a redstone torch here and we give it a quick pulse, so we place down a redstone torch and then delete it again. As you can see, the redstone sort of gets stuck in a loop and it's going around and around and around and around and around. Okay, we can extend this delay by adding more delay on the repeaters, so we've got it nice and slow now. It doesn't quite give you uh, a fit. But what you can do is, uh, for an example, you can hook this up to a light so it'll flash on and off. I suppose you could use this for some sort of lighthouse if you wanted, or you could use them for more complicated redstone builds uh, sort of things like uh, timers you can use clocks for, for timers and uh, things like that so that's the first one we'll get into how to turn them on and off in a minute but this is basically how a redstone clock works here I thought I'd use some TU19 features that we've got uh, to get a really cool looking clock so on this clock all you've got to do is place any item into the dropper and as you can see it automatically sort of uh, flicks between them. Now what's happening here is the item that we dropped into this hopper, uh, th this dropper, sorry, the compared to reads and says, oh look, there's an item in there, which powers this block, which powers this redstone dash, dust, which powers this repeater, which powers this block, which powers the, hop the uh, dropper again, which then fires the item into this one, and then it goes around here. So it's like um, firing the item back and forth. You can see it disappear and uh, reappear which makes these comparators light up, so then you can hook up your clock to these. <laughs> really cool, I love them, it's night time. I took off eternal day because uh, it started to rain and I didn't really want to do the episode in rain. So as soon as it sleeps, we'll turn it back on again. So, let's get into some more um, different clocks. Let's be put it on eternal day. Ta -da! And I don't think I need to show you a tutorial on this, these are just two droppers facing into each other. As easy as that. Comparators, blocks, redstone, repeaters. Wonderful. This one I don't need to do a tutorial on. This one is the same as this one. It's just smaller. Like this. And this can be very, very quick as well. And in fact, we've got a little bit of a redstone lock here. That's the trouble with TU19 at the minute. 
is grab it. <laughs> is that redstone can be a little bit funky sometimes. Let's um put that on a little bit of delay there. Okay, so then oh, a little bit of redstone lock. Do we need it like that for now then? Boop boop. There we go, it's working. So same same as before, it's just a little bit more compact. We've got another one here, a different design with um, repeaters going into blocks instead of redstone dust. This is quite useful because it's very efficient. It uses less redstone, obviously two redstone dust less than this one. And again, works the same way. Boop, 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 boop. They look awesome though. I love playing around with clocks. Whenever you get bored, I always just come onto a redstone world and try and uh, build what clocks I can because they're so fun again I don't think I need to do a tutorial on how to build any of these ones yet that repeat is facing that way This repeat is facing that way. Okay So here we have the same clock as we just looked at But this is hooked up to a mono stable circuit and we've gone through mono stable circuits uh, Quite a few times already and basically it's a way of sending a one tick pulse through something and this is a very easy way to start it. As you can see, I've been starting these clocks here by just like placing down and destroying a redstone torch very quickly. But that's not great if you're trying to do like some sort of map, you know, some sort of redstone map. Uh, you don't really want to have to start it manually. So here, if you push the button, it starts the clock for you. Uh, I've gone through monostable circuits before, but basically what this does is this button obviously powers this repeater. There's a piston, I've got a sticky piston under there, which powers the um, block, but also powers the piston a split tick later, allowing one tick to come through to this repeater going through the clock. The only reason why I've got a repeater here is so the signal doesn't come back, because if I didn't have the repeater there, as you can see, <laughs> the piston goes a little bit funky. So I just put a repeater there to stop the signal from like feedbacking back through into the monostable circuit. If, however, you don't have any sticky pistons, you can use a normal piston and some sand or some gravel, and it'll do exactly the same thing, but the sand and gravel will just fall back down itself. I'm turning these clocks off as I go because of um, the redstone lag we've currently got on uh, on console. Did he, he kept going. Stop it. Stop. Stop doing your thing. Okay, so here I've got a different design. Now, this one, we've learned how to start them. But this one is actually uh, able to be start or, or to be started. Is that even a word? This one can be started and stopped. Does that make sense? <laughs> so uh, we've got the clock here. All right. If I move this block over here, you can now recognize this is the clock that we've been working with. I've got a monostable circuit here, which is on the last one. But now what I've got is a little bit of redstone coming out of the block to a piston. And this will allow us to turn it off. So if I turn it on, as you can see, the monostable circuit activated. We've got a redstone lock here. This is uh, TU19 at its finest, would you believe? Oh, that's because it's a lever. No, it's fine. Yeah, lever, not a button. Ignore me. So now we've got the uh, clock going. And now you can turn the lever off. And this is going to drag this piston back and not allow the clock to go anymore. Boop. And there you go, and the clock stopped. And all we've got to do is flick the lever again, and the clock starts up once more. Wonderful. So now you can now start and stop a clock on your own command without having to break anything. Another start and stoppable design here uh, is a little bit different one. This one I've put in because some people like the sound of pistons going on the clock. All of these ones are pretty much silent so far. I mean, this one's got a piston when it starts and stops, and the monostable ones do. But the clocks, when they're running, don't have a sound because they're only repeaters. So this one uses pistons to push a redstone block forward and backwards. Really, really simple. When the redstone block is here, it's going to power this repeater, which powers this redstone dust, powering the piston, pushing the redstone block back. So this can be powered, and then it powers it this way. So it's like a figure of eight, and then I've just got a piston here to start and stop it. So, I don't know, it's more red, uh, redstone intensive, more resource intensive, but some people do prefer to have a noise. Uh, personally, I don't, <laughs> but some people like to have a noise going in the background. I suppose like a, a sound indicator. Okay, and then we've got a couple of different ones here that I just thought I'd throw in as... Um, 
I don't know, just as bonus. I, I'm pretty sure I don't need to show you how to build these. If I stand up here, you guys can see exactly how that's built. Redstone, repeaters facing that way, repeaters facing that way. Do you know what I mean? You guys can see from above exactly how it works. And you, we've gone through monostable circuits before, so if you don't know how to build those, you just have to go back through the episodes. I'm not going to go through things we've already done before every single episode. <laughs> okay, so here, I thought I'd use some TU19 features again. So we've got a dropper, and then we've got these three hoppers here. We've got a little bit of a clock here, and we've got a lever to turn it on and off. So basically, if I put an item, any item at all, into here... Uh, in fact, did I already have... I did. I already had one in there. Okay, so if we flick this lever, as you can see, the clock's now going. And you can have um, redstone coming off anywhere here. You know, you can have your, your output here if you wanted anything like that. And have this hooked up to uh, a lamp or whatever you wanted the output to be. And then when we flick the lever, this lever is going to lock this hopper. And uh, th it won't let any items go through it into the dropper. Okay, but it's very simple how it works. As soon as an item enters the dropper, the comparator reads it, says, yes, there's an item in there, I shall power. It then powers the block, which powers the dust, which powers the repeater, which powers the block, which powers the redstone, which uh, powers the dropper to fire. It goes into the hopper, into the hopper, into the hopper, back into the dropper, and restarts again, so that's the clock. So this hopper is facing into this one, this one's facing into this one, this one's facing into the dropper. So very quickly, I'll show you how to do that in case some of you don't know how, how these work. What you're going to need to do is face a dropper facing up. Face a hop. You've got to crouch click onto the face of the dropper. Okay, so you can see it facing in it. Click or crouch click on top of the face of that one so it faces down. Then crouch click into that one. So then you get this loop. Okay, very, very simple. And then the lever there just turns it on and off. So when there's no power going to this hopper, the item, as you can see, the piece of sand in this case, is just going round and round and round. Jump cut! <laughs> and uh, the last one, sorry about the jump cut, uh, but the last one here is a, a little bit of a useless clock, but it is my favourite, and I'm sure it has been done before in Minecraft, but I'm going to call it my own invention for now, until I find someone who has done it. But it's very, very compact, uh, and it uses anything along the lines of a furnace, or, or anything like that. I'll show you some different examples in a minute. But basically, if we put an item in there, the clock starts. And if we take it out, the item, as you can see, so look at the redstone over here, uh, stops. But as soon as we put it back in again, uh, it starts pulsing. And the great thing with this is that you can have your output coming out pretty much from anywhere. It really doesn't matter where you have it. Uh, pretty much anywhere will flash, but it's really really simple this one. Basically this comparator is checking if there's an item uh, in this furnace and if there is it lights up going to this block which goes into which empowers this repeater, powering this block, powering this piece of redstone dust, powering this repeater going into the side of the comparator, uh, turning the comparator off temporarily and then obviously that power then gets lost as it comes around uh, and then the item in the furnace then allows the comparator to turn back on again that sounds really really complicated i promise it's getting night time i promise that it's not complicated it just the way i explain things sometimes uh, does make it sound complicated but the great thing with this is that we can pretty much do it with anything i mean we could put a um brewing stand here and put a bottle in it let's just put this in it for now and it works <laughs> pretty much pretty much anything uh, will make it work I think even a chest will make it work when you open the chest no oh, if we put an item in the chest yeah if you put an item in the chest it'll work so maybe for an adventure map you could do something really really cool like when you put an item in a chest or when you put something in the furnace the clock starts going really really cool so you can turn it off by taking whatever is in your item your chest your furnace your brewing stand whatever like that if you remove it you can stop it or if you get a lever you can just place the lever on here flick it and then that'll stop it as well because then the lever's given constant power to this block so then it's always on turning the comparator off um, always until you flick it back off again 
So, a few different ways. Really, really compact. You can turn it on and off really, really easy. I think it's pretty cool that it uses, like, um, a chest or a furnace or something like that. I haven't seen anybody do this design, so for the moment, I'm going to call it myself until I see a video of uh, someone who's actually made the exact same thing as me. We need a name for it, guys. Maybe the, the Z-Clock. <laughs> we'll call it the Z-Clock for now. Anyway, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and we shall see you in the next episode. Bye!